Hello. In the last video, I looked at the architectural style known as Queen Anne Revival and ended with a brief mention of Edwin Lutyens, whose work epitomises this style. Lutyens was interested in buildings and construction crafts from childhood. He enjoyed visiting carpenters' shops, builders' yards and construction sites, observing craftspeople at work and sketching what he saw. He had a natural flair for drawing, spent two years at Kensington School of Art, followed by a year in an architect's office, before launching his own practice at the tender age of just 21. While he was engaged on his first commission, a private house near Farnham in Surrey, he met the artist, horticulturalist and garden designer Gertrude Jekyll, for whom he would go on to design Munstead Wood, Jekyll's house at Godalming, a two-storey, Tudor-inspired house in local Bargate stone with some half-timbering, a plain tiled roof and prominent brick chimney stacks. Munstead Wood made Lutyen's name and marked the start of a long and highly successful professional partnership with Gertrude Jekyll that included more than a hundred gardens. Their collaborative work married traditional gardening skills with the latest horticultural knowledge, in much the same way that Queen Anne Revival architecture blended tradition with inventiveness. Unlike the formal bedding schemes favoured by earlier Victorian gardeners, Jekyll and Lutyen's designs combine structure from formal paths and steps with informal borders filled with billowing plants. Hester Coombe near Taunton in the care of historic England is a good example. A typical Jekyll and Lutyen's garden is characterised by overflowing shrubbery and herbaceous plants with swathes of carefully chosen complementary colours, a style that came to define the English country garden. Lutyens also benefited from coverage in Country Life magazine, which was launched in 1897 by Edward Hudson and soon achieved a wide circulation. Hudson commissioned Lutyens for several projects, including a show home for himself, the deanery at Sonning in Berkshire, completed in 1907, and the Country Life headquarters, Hudson House at 8 Tavistock Street in London, which were then featured in the magazine. Hudson House, classically inspired with harmonious proportions, but freely interpreted, there's a fluency to Lutyen's designs, reassuringly rooted in tradition, and at the same time, inventive. The salutation at Sandwich in Kent has a Christopher Wren-like facade. It's now a hotel, but was originally built as a private house. It's red brick with stone dressings, a massive chimney and steep pitched hipped roof. We saw Lutyen's Anglican St Jude's Church at Hampstead Garden suburb in both part eight and part nine of this series. Lutyens also designed a second church for Hampstead, the Free Church, which was shared by Baptists and Congregationalists. Built in 1910, it shares the form of St Jude's, but with a dome in contrast to St Jude's spire. And both buildings parlay Queen Anne Revival style into religious form. Lutyen's only design for social housing was for apartments in Vincent Street and Page Street in Pimlico, South West One, built in 1929 and 30 with a striking black and white checkerboard exterior. Having said Lutyen's does reassuring, you can't say he doesn't spring a few surprises along the way. Lutyen's was one of three architects appointed by the Imperial Wargraves Commission and among the memorials are designed 
the mighty and evocative memorial to the missing of the Somme at Tietval, the cenotaph in Whitehall, the Midland Railway War Memorial in Derby, and the Arch of Remembrance in Victoria Park, Leicester. Lutyen's work is characterised by a rare architectural fluency and great attention to detail, an ability to be both bold and practical, to exercise inventiveness within an orderly framework. His design for Queen Mary's Dolls House at Windsor is Palladian classical, built to a scale of one inch to one foot, and more than 1,500 artists and craftspeople contributed fittings and furnishings to create a miniature showcase of the best of British. Bottles of wines and spirits in the cellar were filled with thimblefuls of the real stuff from Berry Brothers of St James. James Purdy and Sons made working model miniature shotguns. The house has hot and cold running water and flushing toilets. Next time, I'm going to begin to look at the institutional buildings of our period, starting with prisons. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder. <laughs>